Good morning. Good morning. You know, when I saw Anthony was not around, I said, I had to make a very long message. <laughs> And I was, uh, you know, I was afraid because I know Anthony will always keep you around, uh, awake. And I, I, I'm afraid I might be putting you to sleep. <laughs> anyway, when Pastor Bernie uh, sent me an email, he asked me, what's, your, what's the title of your message? And I was looking at, you know, at the titles that I was uh, thinking of, the title that I would be giving to my message on Numbers 23, 22, and I was, the first one was, let me read, kicking the donkey and managing your, I, for, I forgot my, your sensitivity energy. The number two one is, remember the donkey, and I said maybe that's, or don't kick the donkey, and I said, oh, maybe I, I should, um, Remember my message, it should be remember the donkey. <laughs> so uh, Pastor Bernie was talking about watching the Indiebor. I'm always fascinated by flying. But there was a man, you know. This is a story about a man by the name of Larry Walters. A 33-year-old man who decided he wanted to see his neighborhood attack. Oh, 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 flying. So he went down to the local army surplus store and bought 45 uh, used weather balloons. And uh, that afternoon he strapped himself in a lone chair, <laughs> to which several of his friends tied the balloons now filled with helium gas. He took with him something to drink, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and a BB gun, figuring out that when he's aloft already, he will shoot one at a time, the balloons, and that will make him land. Waters, who assumed the balloons would leap him about 100 feet, was caught off guard when the chair soared more than 11,000 feet. And, you know, he could not use the BB gun because he was so afraid. <laughs> so, but the problem is he snuck into the control soles the control areas of Los Angeles International Airport. And it created a lot of, you know, traffic <laughs> problems and delays. He could not shoot with the VP gun, he was so afraid. For two hours, he stayed aloft over Los Angeles area. And the, you know, the air traffic controllers uh, sent a note on the notice of airmen saying, you know, you have to, we have to shut down the runways. No, no airplane should leave. All uh, arriving aircraft should be, uh, you know, transferred to another airport. Soon after he was safely grounded, after two hours, the reporters asked him three questions. I would like to ask you the second question. The first two questions, I know you, would, you, you know the answer. But the third question, I know you don't know. So the first question was, were you scared? What's your answer? Yes. yes. Would you do it again? No. No. Yes, that's the answer. But the third question is, why did you do it? <laughs> and he said, you know, because you can just sit there in the loan, he said. That's his answer. We can laugh at the extreme ways people want to do something even though actions that are remarkably impossible to do or if possible would be extremely dangerous. But there are an abundance of stories of people who find the persistence to continue what they are doing even if it was, if it was obviously clear that they, are already, they already need to stop. Or maybe someone must have warned them, don't do it. Don't do it. In Numbers 22, we find a story that really fits something of a kind of persistence. You know, it involves a donkey. I, I don't know if you heard this maybe in your elementary years when they talk about, do you know, a donkey can talk? I know people can talk, but not a donkey. 
So in Numbers 22, we find that story. It, it, it narrates a story about Balaam. Balak, the king of the Moab, of Moab, was so afraid of the Israelites because they were already on the corners of the land of Moab. And they were so afraid. So they summoned Balak, uh, Balaam to curse the nation of Israel. But it was against God's will. So in Numbers 22, we can read. Let's start with Numbers 22 and verse 8. You know, Balak knew how the Israelites defeated armies after armies. So they are already marching towards the land of Moab. He wanted Balaam to curse Israel. And what a weird thing for, you know, for a good man, in quotation marks, to do. But initially, Balaam appeared to be aware what his role really is. He could not do it because that's against God's will. If you read on, you know, on that Numbers 22, that's not the will of God for Israel to be cursed. To make the story short, Balak finally, you know, Convince Balaam to go see God, converse with him. But four times God says, "This is the one. This is the thing that you have to say. I don't want to. Cur you don't want to curse Israel because they are blessed people." Now, no matter what God says for four times or five times, Balak, Balaam still continued with his plan. So on his way, together with his donkey, now on his way, to make the story short, he went on his way. But on the way, his donkey suddenly stopped on the road. No matter how hard Balaam kicked her, she would not match. Without the donkey, he could not, you know, make his uh, plan materialize. So finally, the donkey cried out because... He was beaten three times already. I don't know why the donkey did not talk when he was already whipped one time only. <laughs> but he took two, three times. So finally the donkey cried out, Why are you beating me? Haven't I served you faithfully all these years? To paraphrase what he was saying. And, you know, after three times that he beat the donkey, God opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw an angel with a sword before the donkey. An angel spoke to Balaam and said, You fool! Quit beating her! Even see, the donkey could see, I was standing here. Your donkey just saved your life. For if you carried out this mission, you would have been killed. In fact, I would have killed you and let the donkey live. That's in Numbers 22, verse 28. And you know, the angel then left. And I can just imagine Balaam kissing his donkey all the way to the stable. <laughs> that is a very fine line, brethren. Knowing when God is trying to say something to you. Maybe he's saying something, don't do it, or maybe wait, or maybe, okay, review your plan. There is a very fine line. If you do everything you possibly can to get something to happen, and it doesn't, then an angel must be on the road somewhere, so don't beat the donkey. <laughs> Take a little time out. Smell the flowers, maybe go out and review your plan and your mission. You know, when the Roman guards arrested Jesus Christ, when they came to arrest Jesus Christ, Peter sprang to his defense and prepared to engage in massive violence. He actually did cut off the, one of the ears of the guard, of one guard. And here was a chance for Jesus to escape, but he did not. He did not, but because he knew that the Roman guard was part of the plan. That was part of the plan. Take a little, take a little time out. This is part of the plan. 
He did not kick the Roman donkey. <laughs> he knew it was time. And you know, in one of uh, the book, one of the books that I read, in it's titled "Jesus the CEO." Uh, I, I forgot the name. Bernie Siegel, a doctor of cancer, asked uh, his cancer patients one time, "Why did you need this illness?" And he shocks everyone. He actually was asking something. And he said, he claims that many times it is a message that we have been ignoring. According to Dr. Siegel, while nobody wants to be ill, many patients say that cancer was the best thing that ever happened to them. They learned to appreciate life and to express their feelings to their loved ones. They were able to pick up the paintbrush they previously had not been holding for long. They appreciated life. They appreciated their loved ones. They appreciated feelings and relationships. And appreciated to express their feelings to their loved ones. They were able to pick up everything that they had not been doing before. Even blessings can be illness. Sometimes your illness could be a donkey. That you see God's plan in your life. And you have to enjoy it. Another story. Remember Paul on the road to Damascus? He was on his way to arrange for the arrest of all Christians. He arranged for a letter from the governor saying you can arrest, you know, you can arrest them. He wanted all Christians brought to trial and punished. Christians all over the place were so afraid of him. But he was blinded by a very shiny light from the sky. And a voice, maybe that's his donkey, and a voice that asks, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? Paul encountered a deeper and donkey, a shiny light, and a voice that asks him, what's the motive for doing this to him? Listen to this. Plot tires that keep us from catching a plane, missed appointment that cause a project's delay, banks that tell us no, you can have another loan. All of this can be donkeys that are keeping us from endangering ourselves in ways we cannot see. Many times when you feel farthest from the truth, you can be sitting in a very dangerous place incredibly loud, extremely close. Did you see that movie? It's about Tom Hanks. It's about a, a, a boy who was, or, or was, whose father you know, died in 9-11. And he was looking for answers, you know. He was looking for answers and he thought all the while he was so alone doing everything, you know. The plans of the boy was Look for this, you know, the answer for the questions that the, the riddle that his father left him. And all the while he didn't know the mother was watching every step he takes. When the donkey you are riding suddenly stops, don't kick it. Get up and look for an angel standing on the way. That donkey might be saving your life. They weren't giving. They, you, know, you know the donkey were not given big ears for nothing. <laughs> Jesus did not kick the donkey. But let's look at what could be another side of the story. What if there is a real need to be persistent? After all there is a need for all real stubbornness. We can look at the stubbornness of God's people in the face of opposition. People were healed, demons exercised, and people repented because they were persistent in carrying out the task Jesus gave them. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not, education will not. You, you can see more, it's more common than, uh, you know, to see people who are talented but 
landed for nothing. Unsuccessful individual with talent, genius. Sometimes it's like a proverb, just a saying. Education will not. The world is full of educated, you know, fools. The relics. Persistence, determination, it's one thing. So how would we know what's the right thing to do? God has called us to be stubbornly persistent for the right things in life. It says, do not be weary in well-doing. And what if it's not worth pursuing? Then do what's right. Although Jesus, you know, although Jesus was a recruiter of sorts, he never wasted time and energy begging to manipulate others to follow him. If you don't want me, you have the freedom to leave. If you don't want me, if you resist my ideas, you are free to leave. But then I love you. You can come back. In fact, he trained his stock of 12 to wipe the dust off their feet. To, to keep moving if people were resistant to his teachings. He also said not to cast pearl before swine. In Matthew 7 verse 6 it says, It's a very graphic image about the importance of knowing when and where the treasure of the gospel should be preached. How do we know that when we should stop? I don't know. I don't have all the answers. But I know. Looking at the Bible is what Jesus did. Maybe I can look at Jesus' experience that would help us to answer my question. You know, Jesus stopped when he felt energy leaked from him. Jesus was so aware of his energy, energy that once when a woman just touched his clothes, energy went out from him. Everybody's touching you. They said, the, the, the disciples were saying, how could that be possible? Everyone's, you know, touching you. It's a, it's a big crowd. How would you know a special someone touched you? But Jesus said, no. I felt something. I felt something. I know. And then he turned to face the woman who asked to be healed. Her intense desire drew on his energy so that he could literally feel her faith. Jesus is very sensitive to somebody's urgent need. That's what stops Jesus. And that's what how sensitive Jesus is. He had to stop. So we should be sensitive to the Spirit. The Spirit shows us the way. Balaam all the while knew the way, the right way. But, but you know he relied on his read. If you look up to the, the later part of Numbers, in Numbers 31, he led people to become, you know, idol worshippers. Practicers, you know, those people who practice divination. Maybe kasama na dun yung the horoscope. <laughs> so we have, we should be sensitive. He, re, he relied, you know, Balaam relied on his greed because there was gain, you know. Balak was bribing him. In, in verse 7, you will read the, in verse 7 of Numbers 22. They were giving him, you know, rewards just for them, for him to curse Israel. But Balaam made himself slave to a different spirit. Donkeys were not given big ears for nothing. Donkeys are work animals. They call it, they, some, some people may call it a dumb animal. But Jesus makes the dumb even more intelligent than human sometimes. He can talk <laughs> when an angel comes blocking his way. At least the donkey knew she was having for trouble. There are certain kinds of events unknown to us humans 
which are very, you know, keen for animals to discern. And remember uh, one uh, man whose life was saved, he survived the tsunami in India because his, his, his elephant, a big one, would not want to work. It proceeded to a high place when the, before the, ch the tsunami arrived. You know, uh, I am wondering, Elijah was given horses. But you know, when Jesus on his triumphal entry to Jerusalem came, he was on a donkey. Donkey gave us a lot of objects of learning. But it, it was to fulfill what a prophecy in the scriptures. That he would be riding on the donkey in Zechariah 9. Verse 9, it talks about one who is coming, Jerusalem, oh, daughters of Zion. Somebody will be coming, and he will be riding on a donkey. What, if ever, did we learn from this account in Numbers 22? If there is a message that you should remember, don't remember the donkey. While that is the, my message, don't remember the donkey, but remember that account will give us the message of God that God loves His people, God defends His people, God protects His people. He allowed the donkey to tell, you know, someone who plans bad things against His people to stop. God protects and defends His people. He sends angels to protect us. You know, in one of those wonderful trips, so first you have to remember, remember God protects and defends His people. In one of those wonderful trips that we had, with my, we, 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 that I had with my son when we traveled to Florida, was when our, my, my, my brother-in-law, uh, said, okay, I, I'll go drive you all the way to the, those places where you, you, you have not seen yet. So we went with him. It was August of 2003, and it was a very, very rainy day. My brother-in-law drove his car along one narrow freeway. I don't know what freeway was that. It was raining very hard. Then he blurted out, oh, we, we, he said, we missed the right exit. And we, back, we went back, and five minutes later, we were back on the truck. But as we looked forward, we saw ahead were several cars on every side of the highway. And people were all around, and our, on our back were police cars with, you know, sirens blurting here and there and blowing away your ears. I realized, had not, had, if I realized that had, that not happened, that we had been lost, we would be one of the victims of a multi-car accident, vehicular accidents on the freeway. Five minutes. And I know, because everyone's up, just getting out of their cars, you know. An angel, I know, made that happen. God protects His people. Second thing that you have to remember is, God speaks to us. God speaks what He wants us to do. When we are troubled, He speaks in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our relationships. Is it wonderful to know that somebody watches over us every time? He is a God who will not only protect us, but will speak the truth when something is not right. So don't kick the donkeys in your life. If you know you're doing God's plan, you can be sure that ahead of you, the angel will be there protecting you. But if not, you can be sure a donkey will blurt out, you know, and say something against you. So don't kick the donkeys in your life. Be yielded to God's will in your life and don't be distracted by any other plan. It is not your plan. It is not my plan. It is God's plan. 
God is first. You don't need fancy cars to go out there and fulfill the great commission. You only need a donkey yourself. Your availability, your time, your faithfulness, our faithfulness. You only need an angel who will watch over you. Don't let your, your donkey speak. And don't remember the donkey in this message. Remember the creator of the donkey. The one who can make everyone speak. You know when Jesus Christ was on his triumphal entry to, to Jerusalem. And everyone was praising him. Everyone was praising him. In Matthew 21 it says you know. Some of the Pharisees saw it. Why are they? Why, why are you? Will you please stop your disciples praising and singing Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest? But Jesus said, you know, if you will stop them, even the stones will speak. If you will, you know, restrain them from talking, even the stones will speak. So don't remember the donkey in this message. Remember the creator of the donkey. And the one who in his presence even the stones will cry out. I believe brethren that this is a message that we always have to remember. God spurs. God makes you speak. God makes you stop. God makes you move. When it is not for you, it must not be for you. If God wills, God will give it to you. Whatever you desire in your life, let God be, be there always. And be sensitive to God's Spirit talking to all of us. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our Father, we give you thanks. It's a wonderful time, Lord. Thank you always for protecting us. Thank you for always caring for us. Thank you for always watching over us. Thank you for defending us. Thank you because you speak to us. You speak words, Lord. You speak your words in other people in our hearts, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our relationship. Thank you because we can always come to you. Thank you very much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.